Hi, I'm Paul Gorykowski. I'm Senior Manager for the PCIe product. And today I'm going to be talking about how you can accelerate verification by using the PCI Express Verification IP. So first I'd like to talk about ease of configuration. The VIP has, has a lot of features built into it that really enable you to get going quickly. So for instance, we have pre-configured instances that you easily plug in and by doing that, you tell us if you're using pipe, certes, PMA. It also tells us the maximum number of lanes you're using. And the nice thing about these instances is they come up pre-configured, out of the box, ready to run. Now, of course, we give you a lot of parameters where you can configure these and set specific timing and so forth, and those are all optional for you to set. But the key point is you can get going quickly out of the box. The next thing we offer are several applications. The applications are built from the ground up to enable you to, to write high-level constructs to generate transactions, TLPs, DLPs, etc. And the way we do this is, first off, we kind of start off with a basic environment that gives you built-in scoreboarding so we can watch end-to-end -end transactions as they go across the bus. The way we do this is we have a shadow memory in the back room, and every time we do a write to a particular memory location, that write is picked up and stored in our shadow memory. So if later on you eventually read from that location, we can quickly do a compare and compare actual versus expected. This saves you the effort of having to go and write your own scoreboard. Also, we have um, several applications that are built on top of this scoreboarding mechanism. We have the driver. The driver is a great way to write all of your PCIe transactions. It understands every transaction you can run on the bus so if you wanted to do a write to a particular memory location, you just give us the location, the data you want to write, and any other optional parameters that you'd like to do. So we, of course, can randomize that, or you can send a very directed TLP across using this mechanism. Of course, we have similar things for doing reads and messages, etc. And then on the other side, we have a, a completer. The completer is on the opposite side, and it enables you to basically respond to incoming requests. So a completer has a memory model attached to it. So anytime something comes in, it's stored in that memory, and then later on it, it is retrieved and it can be sent back. We have a lot of controls built in to handle the spacing of these transactions, breaking them to multiple completions, and so forth. We also have a requester, and the requester is a great tool for generating traffic on the bus. Basically, you tell us if you want to do reads or writes and the number of transactions you'd like to do. There's several knobs involved where you can set up to describe the type of data you want to send across or read, also the spacing of that data. And then you just let it loose and it'll go off and do all these transactions. Now, what's really nice is the requester works in the background and in parallel to the other tools. So the driver and the computer can still be in use at the same time. And then finally, we have an NVMe application as well. And the NVMe application supports both host and controller, and it also can be used directly with the PCI Express VIP from Synopsys, or it can be used with a third-party PCI Express VIP, and it also has support for PCIe over fabrics. I'm sorry, NVMe over fabrics. So the next thing I'd like to talk about is error injections. The error injections that we support with the model um, range from those that are completely automated and built in. So for instance, we can do basically a list of injections that we support, and you can tell us which one you want us to run. We'll do that error injection, make sure it happens, and then check it. So let's assume you wanted to do an LCRC error. You would tell us to inject that error. We go ahead and then do that, and then we make sure a NAC comes back from the other device. Once we get that NAC, we'll then go ahead and replay and recover from the error injection. If for some reason the other the device on the other end actually sent an act back instead of an act, we would flag that as an error. What's nice about this is you're not having to go and write complex callbacks that handle message to motion and things of that nature. It's all automated, just one or two lines of code, and you can send this error across and have everything handled for you. Now, on the other side, you may have some very special scenarios that require complex combinations of events to happen. In such case, we do give you the ability to write your own error injections via our user-defined exceptions. And there's a couple of options here. They're all callback-based. One callback um, solution would be a factory model that you could register with any particular layer. 
And what you would do is have full access to every packet that's going through the system, and you could easily randomize uh, the number of error injections to do. Say, for instance, you're interested in having duplicate sequence numbers, the LCRC error that I mentioned er earlier, or any other um, built-in errors. You can just tell us that 10% of the time you want one of those to happen. You can set up your own distributions, will automatically handle the error injection automatically. And then, Further on, what we also have is the ability to get very specific. We even give you access at the symbol level, so you can get the lane striping and corrupt any one of those packets, I'm sorry, any one of those symbols coming across. So I want to thank you for your time, and if you'd like any more information on this, please head over to synopsis.com VIP. Thanks again.